What's up, YouTube? So I figured out something pretty cool to do uh, with your multi-rotor and GoPro. Uh, if you're into aerial photography or aerial video, I think you'd like this a lot. This is an aerial panorama. I've been playing around with making these, uh, and it's very, very simple. It's pretty similar to the way that you do it with a standard camera on a tripod. The only difference is that you're using an aerial vehicle. So I will show you guys how to get results just like this one. Uh, it's totally free. All you need is your vehicle, a GoPro, and a program called Microsoft Ice for Image Composite Editor. And I will post a link in the description where to get that. So the first thing you need to do is set your uh, GoPro or other camera. You can really use any camera you want that has a multi-shot time-lapse mode. Set it to the time-lapse mode in as short duration as you can. Uh, my GoPro here is set at one half second uh, wait time between images. And the reason you want to do that is the more images you have and the more overlap you have, the more accurate your panorama will be and the easier it will stitch together. It might take a little longer, but at the end you'll come out with a smoother, less grainy, more accurately stitched product. Okay, now here's an example of the flight path that you would use if you were going to take a panorama. So climb to a set altitude, whatever you're going to do, and kind of hover there while you get your bearings and get set up. Go ahead and start your GoPro recording if it hasn't been already, and then yaw in a 360 degree circle while capturing those images every half second. And then descend at exactly the same orientation that you took off in. Now when you get these images back, it's important to only put the ones into Microsoft Ice that were from the 360 degree pan, or it could mess up your panorama. Okay, so here we are with Microsoft Ice. Go ahead and select the images from your GoPro and drag them in. Now it's going to start uploading the source images there. And that should take a couple seconds, and I'll speed that up for you guys. Okay, there we go. Now the first time you render the image, it might not work 100% properly. So what you go ahead and do is over in the left-hand corner of the window, go ahead and click on camera motion and try picking a different motion type. This will often give you a much better image if it's not stitched together properly or if it's stitched somewhat hemispherically. Okay, so there we go. It looks like it's all stitched together, but still looks like it's missing a few pieces. My head has been removed by the stitching, so we're going to try yet another motion type and see if that fixes it. Okay, that looks like about as good as it's going to get. We can try using another motion type, see if that fixes it, but I doubt that it will have any effect. So the next thing we need to do is we need to crop out the area that is usable. So we're going to go ahead and click on automatic crop. And I find that that does a really excellent job. Now you can manipulate the box if you want to, but the idea is to cut out all of the gray area that is unusable. And no matter how um, you stitch the images together, there will be a little bit of unusable area because if your quad deviates by as much as half a degree, you'll always end up with some. So you click automatic crop and it'll bring the box just like you see it. It'll find the most area that you can, that you can use. Now you can see that this is a pretty large image. Right here it shows at 47.31 megapixels. Not small by any means. So let's drag the quality slider up to 100% 
and we're going to export it as a JPEG image. Export the disk. We're going to click Save. And right now, it's just going to take all of the image data out of our RAM, and it's going to save it to the disk. So I'll speed that up for you guys also. Now, at the end of the day, you end up with something that looks like this. And while it's not perfect, I've still got some of my shoulder caught in there. It is pretty cool. And for something that you can do with a quad, if you don't have uh, filming capacity or you want to try something a little bit different, a very large panorama is awesome, especially because you can pan around it like a film, but you can do it in any direction or at any speed you want to. Another couple things you could try is uh, moving your gimbal up and down while you are panning around taking the original pictures to see if you can get more vertical area in your panorama. So if you like this video, guys, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.